Uh, we're going to jump right into blue. This is the Lord of the Rings Tales of Middle Earth full set review. Uh, we just finished white. White was pretty exciting. Let's look at blue. Obviously, if you know me at all, it's my favorite color. Um, so I'm the most excited to check this color out. First up, we have Arwen's Gift. Three and a blue for a sorcery. This spell costs one less to cast if you control two or more legendary creatures. Scry two, then draw two. That's pretty good. Uh, potentially just two or three mana. The spell costs one less to cast. Yeah, so it's potentially two colorless and a blue. So three mana to scry two, draw two. I'd pay that any day of the week. Uh, next up, we have Bewitching Leechcraft. Ooh. Uh, one and a blue for an enchantment aura. Enchant creature. When Bewitching Le Leechcraft enters the battlefield, tap Enchanted Creature. Enchanted Creature has, if this creature would untap during your untap step, remove a 1-1 counter from it instead if you do untap it. So you have to pay to untap creatures um, that have been bewitched by Leechcraft. That's pretty good. Next up we have Bill Fernie. Sounds like a guy that works at Staples. Um, he is the Bree Swindler. 2-1 for a human rogue legendary creature for one and a blue. Whenever Bill Fernie becomes blocked, choose one. You can create a treasure token. You can, or, so there, sorry, there's only two. There's a lot of um, text. I thought there was more than one choice. Um, so you can either create a treasure token or target opponent gains control of target horse you control. If they do, remove Bill Fernie from combat and create three treasure tokens. So you give them a Trojan horse and get a bunch of treasure in return. I'm sure someone's going to come up with a really weird combo with this card. And I'm excited for it. Um, next up, we have Birthday Escape. This is what I like to do every year. One blue mana for a sorcery, draw a card, and the ring tempts you. Not bad. Next up, we have Born Upon a Wind. Oh no, who's that falling over? I looked at Aragorn. Sorry, I'm going to read the f card first before I start reading the flavor text. One and a blue for an instant. You may cast spells this turn as though they had flash. Draw a card. So you set yourself up for your opponent's turn to cast things at instant speed. Um, and you get to draw a card for only two mana. That's pretty good. The flavor text says, I looked on Aragorn and thought how great and terrible a lord he might have become had he taken the ring for himself. Not for naught does Mordor fear him. And there's like Gimli throwing somebody overboard. And Aragorn standing there looking like he's trying not to topple over interesting next up we have captain of umbar two and a blue for a two three human pirate creature with pay one tap it draw a card then discard a card not great there's better options for for filtering or looting as it's called um but not terrible in a in a draft environment that might be a decent pickup Next up, we have Deceive the Messenger. This is... Who is that? Is that... What's his name? The green... The... The forest guy? Ragavan? No. Ragamuffin? I can't remember his name. Deceive the Messenger is one blue for an instant. Target creature gets minus three, minus O until end of turn. And you amass orcs one. So amassing orcs is like amassing um, from the Amonkhet block where you have an orc army card, like your zombie army card back in Amonkhet, and the orc army grows plus one, plus one for each amass. So amass orcs one means if you don't have an army, create a zero, zero black army creature token and put a one, one counter on it. If you already have an orc army token, then you just add another 1-1 one, one counter to it. Which is pretty cool. Council's Deliberation. This is a cool card. Look at all those characters. 
Uh, one in a blue for an instant draw a card. Whenever you scry, if you control an island, you may exile council's deliberation from your graveyard if you do draw a card. That's pretty neat. So you get to draw one, and then later on you get to draw another one. That's kind of kind of cool. Oh, that looks cool. Dreadful as the storm. Two and a blue for an instant. Target creature has base power and toughness 5-5 five, five until end of turn, and the ring tempts you. That's really cool looking. I love that art so much. Uh, next up we have Elrond, Lord of Rivendell. I said that like such a nerd. Elrond. Uh, Elrond is two and a blue for a 3-2 elf noble legendary creature. Whenever Elrond or another creature enters the battlefield under your control, scry one. If this is the second time this ability has resolved this turn, then the ring tempts you. Pretty cool. Next up we have Gandalf, Friend of the Shire. There's an uncommon Gandalf card, ladies and gentlemen, and hobbits and everyone in between. Gandalf, Friend of the Shire is three and a blue for a 2-4 Avatar Wizard legendary creature with Flash. You may cast sorcery spells as though they had flash. Whenever the ring tempts you, if you choose a creature other than Gandalf, uh, as your ring bearer, draw a card. So another thing about the ring bearer, or the ring tempting you, um, I quickly showed you this card, which is kind of the steps. It's almost like a dungeon. Um, this card, every time the ring tempts you, you level up the ring. Um, and then this is the other side of the card, which is kind of the rules. Um, as the ring tempts you, you get an emblem named the ring if you don't have one. Then your emblem gains its next ability and you choose a creature to you control to become or remain your ring bearer. So every time the ring tempts you, you have an opportunity to change who your ring bearer is. But at all times, one of your creatures must be the ring bearer. Unless that creature dies then you have to wait until the ring tempts you again i believe let me read the rest of the rules the ring can tempt you even if you don't control a creature the ring gains its abilities in order from top to bottom once it gains an ability it has that ability for the rest of the game so it has everything above it as well um, each time the ring tempts you you must choose a creature if you control one each player can have only one emblem named the ring and only one ring bearer at a time. And we'll see this come up a few times um, as we go through this set that, you know, being the ring bearer or having a ring bearer um, is going to change a few things. So um, again, Gandalf says whenever the ring tempts you, if you choose a creature other than Gandalf to be your ring bearer, you get to draw a card. It's just kind of incentivizing you to not give the ring to Gandalf. Because he canonically is afraid of possessing the ring. He does not think that um, the ring's power plus his amassed power uh, is a good combination. So he refuses to take it as often as he can. Uh, next up, we have Glorious Gale. One in a white for an instant counter target creature spell. If the le if it was legendary, then the ring tempts you. Pretty decent. Uh, two mana counter creature, plus a little extra. I like that. Next up, we have Goldberry River Daughter. Oh my god, this art is stunning. One in a white. White. One in a blue for a 1 3 nymph legendary creature. You can tap Goldberry, move a counter of each kind not on Goldberry. From another target permanent you control on to goldberry and then you can pay a blue and tap goldberry to move one or more counters from goldberry on to another target permanent you control if you do draw a card so you can put a bunch of keywords onto goldberry and then distribute all those keywords to other creatures But you can only oh you can only pick one creature to move them to another target permanent. So it doesn't even have to be a creature if you don't want it to be. But that would be weird. Um, maybe you put it on a vehicle or something, a death touch counter. Um, but yeah, it specifically says a counter of each kind, not on Goldberry. So you can't have 
more than one 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 counter you can't stockpile death touch counters and then distribute them you can only have one of each kind um, and then you can move them around that's pretty neat next up we have gray haven's navigator two and a blue for a three two elf pilot with flash gray haven navigator enters the battlefield scry one pretty fine then we have Hithlian Knots. One and a blue for an instant. Tap target creature, scry one, and draw a card. That's pretty good. Look at that creepy golem. Poor, poor Smeagol. Golem looks terrifying in this art. Sam looks pretty cool, actually. Next up, we have Horses of Bruinen. Three blue blue for a sorcery. Return up to two target creatures to their owner's hands. Scry one. The ring tempts you. Bit of an investment, but you get to bounce two things. Scry one and get a ring tempt. A ring tempt? There's going to be a weird shorthand for that eventually. I'm sure of it. Next up we have Eorith of the Healing House. Two and a blue for a 1-4 human cleric legendary creature. Tap it to untap another target permanent. Tap it, uh, untap two other target legendary creatures. Wow, so you can untap lands or uh, any permanent, or you can untap two legendary creatures. That's pretty cool. Next up, we have Isolation at Orthank, Orthonk. Three and a blue for an instant. Put target creature into its owner's library second from the top. It's okay. It just means that the, you want to put something expensive there, then they have to replay it and respend all of their mana. Maybe something has a bunch of counters on it. It's really expensive, um, and they're going to get it back eventually, so it's not as good as like killing it or, or anything like that. Next up, we have... Ethelian Kingfisher. That's a cool bird. Two and a blue for a 2-1 bird creature with flying. When that Kingfisher dies, draw a card. That's just draft fodder right there. That's a good draft card. Knights of Dole Amra Amroth. Three and a blue for a 3-3 human knight creature. Whenever you draw your second card each turn, put a 1-1 counter on Knights of Dole Amroth. So this, there was another knight creature in white that did the very, almost the exact same thing whenever you draw your second card. So it seems like there's a really interesting blue-white draw cards uh, synergy, which I like. Next up we have Lorien Revealed. Look at those poor hobbits. Three blue-blue for a sorcery, draw three cards, and it has island cycling, so you can pay one to cycle it and search your library for an island card. Um, again, the having the land cycling uh, back is really, really strong. I like it. This one's even cheaper. The last set of island, or the last set of land cycling cards was two mana each. This one is one mana. But the white one was also one mana. Uh, I like it. It's pretty good. You could either draw three or get a land in the early game if you need it. Uh, next up, we have Lost Isle Calling. One and a blue for an enchantment. Whenever you scry, put a verse counter on Lost Isle Calling. Then for four blue blue, exile Lost Isle Calling. Draw a card for each verse counter on it. If you had seven or more verse counters on it, take an extra turn after this one. Activate only as a sorcery. Wow. So you play this on turn two and you scry as much as you can. And then by the time you get to turn six, seven, eight, um, you exile it. Um, and if you have seven or more, you get a free turn and you get to draw all those cards. You draw seven, eight cards and you get an extra turn to use those cards. That's pretty strong. Uh, next up, we have Melon Meneldor, Swift Savior. 
Uh, this is the second legendary bird we've seen. Three blue for three three bird soldier legendary creature with flying. Uh, when Me Meneldor deals combat damage to a player, exile up to one target creature you own, then return it to the battlefield under your control. So whenever this hits a player, you get to blink something. That's pretty cool. Uh, next up, we have Nimrodel Watcher. One blue for a 2-1 elf scout creature. Whenever you scry, Nimrodel Watcher gets plus one plus oh until end of turn and can't be blocked this turn. This ability triggers only once each turn. Interesting. It's pretty low to the ground. It's just draft chaff. Um, it's it's subpar. Uh, next up we have Pel... Pelar... Pelar Gear. Survivor. Pelar Gear. One blue for a 1-3 human peasant creature. Tap it to add one mana of any color. Spend it to cast instants or sorceries. Or pay five and a blue. Tap it to target player mills three cards. That's a lot of mana to just mill three cards. Uh, that's not going to fly. The first ability is not bad. I don't think you're ever going to use that second ability, though. Unless you have a way to just make free mana. Um, but that first ability is not too bad. Next up, we have Press the Enemy. Two blue blue for an instant. Return target spell or non-land permanent and opponent controls to its owner's hand. You may cast an instant or sorcery spell with equal or less a mana value from your hand without paying its mana cost. So this is basically Narset's reversal, but more expensive. Um, and you get to choose a new instant or sorcery spell to cast. Uh, Narset's reversal, I believe, just gives you a copy that you can then play. Uh, I like that. That's pretty cool. Rangers of Ithilien. Ithilien. Two blue blue for a 3-3 three, three human ranger creature with vigilance. When rangers of Ithilien enter the battlefield, you gain control of up to one target creature with lesser power for as long as you control rangers of Ithilien and the ring tempts you. Interesting. So you get to snatch something up. Next up, we have Saruman the White. On a blue card. Interesting. Four and a blue for a 4 4 Avatar Wizard legendary creature with Ward 2. Whenever you cast your second spell each turn, amass orcs 2. That's pretty good. I like that. This art, if this card is also like very blurry. Um, I don't know if Scryfall just didn't have the high res version yet. Um, but yeah, I'd like to see this art in its full glory. It looks really cool. Next up, we have Saruman's Trickery. Oh, this looks cool too. Uh, one blue blue for an instant counter target spell. Amass Orcs 1. I like that. I like that. Uh, next up, we have Scroll of Isildur. Two blue for an enchantment saga. Chapter 1, gain control of up to one target artifact for as long as you control Scrolls of Isildur. The ring tempts you. Chapter 2, tap up to two target creatures, put a stun counter on each of them. Chapter 3, draw a card for each tapped creature target opponent controls. So that's pretty good. You can set up something. If someone leaves a couple things back as defenders, you can tap them and then they've got a fully tapped board or something like that. You can maybe draw three or four, maybe upwards of eight or nine, ten cards even. Um, that's pretty fun. I like that. I like that. I'm not sure what I'm picking with that first chapter, um, but there's a ton of options, so that's pretty neat. Next up, we have Soothing of Smeagol. One in a blue for an instant return target non-token creature to its owner's hand and the ring tempts you. Okay. Then we have Stern Scolding. Fool of a Took. I love this scene. Uh, one blue for an instant counter target creature spell with power or toughness two or less. Oh, wow. Okay, so for, for those of you that don't know, I play a lot of blue. Spell Pierce is one of those cards that's just in every deck or at least in consideration for every deck. And it's one blue mana and it counters a non-creature spell unless its controller pays two mana 
So it's always amazing to have a spell pierce in your opening hand. That way the first three turns or so your opponent can't really do anything other than cast creatures. And this counters creatures and not non-creature spells. So if you have spell pierce and stern scolding, they can't do anything for those first few turns. Um, and that's pretty amazing. Power or toughness two or less. Counter target creature spell with power or toughness two or less. So if they play a 1-6 or a 8-1, you can counter it for one mana. Or even an 8-2. That's pretty good. There's going to be a lot of these cards floating around. Uh, next up we have Storm of Saruman. Look at him there on that mountain, just chilling. Just blowing stuff up. Four blue blue for an enchantment with ward three. Enchantments don't normally get ward. That's pretty cool. Whenever you cast your second spell each turn, copy it. Except the copy isn't legendary. You may choose new targets for the copy. That's big. Um, so this is a six mana enchantment with ward three. So it's hard to kill, which is fine. And it makes copies of any spell and if it's a creature, it's no longer legendary. That's pretty neat. I like that a lot. Next up, we have Surrounded by Orcs. Three and a blue for a sorcery. Amass Orcs three, then target player mills X cards, where X is the amassed army's power. So you could mill someone for like 10 or so if you play this in the later stages of a game. That's pretty neat. I'm surprised that blue has so much to do with Orcs. I guess because Sauron is a blue legendary. Uh, Treason of Isengard, two and a blue for a sorcery, put up to one target instant or sorcery card from your graveyard on top of your library, and then amass orcs too. So lots of amassing orcs. Then we have, oh baby, look at that. The Watcher in the Water. Three blue blue for a nine nine Kraken legendary creature. When the Watcher in the Water enters the battlefield tapped, when it enters, it enters with tapped with nine stun counters on it. Whenever you draw a card during an opponent's turn, create a 1-1 one, one blue tentacle creature. Whenever a tentacle creature you control dies, untap up to one target Kraken and put a stun counter on up to one target non-land permanent. So you force draws on your opponent's turn in order for you to make tentacles. Every time you block with a tentacle, you can untap your 9-9. But you also have to put a stun counter on up to one target non-land permanent. So you probably just put a stun counter on this guy because you've just untapped it. Huh. Interesting. I kind of like that. It's fun. You have to play around it a bit. It doesn't say... It doesn't say tentacles made by this specifically. So if you're playing this in a really heavy Kraken deck, you're making a lot of tentacles. Um, so you can easily untap this thing. That's pretty cool. Next up we have Willow Wind. Four blue for a three, four elemental creature with flying. When Willow Wind enters the battlefield, scry two. It's pretty straightforward. Next up, we have the Bath Song. Rubber Ducky, you're the one. That Bath Song? I don't know the Bath Song. Three and a blue for an enchantment saga, uncommon enchantment saga. This is the first, I think this is the first uncommon enchantment. Uh, saga chapter one draw two cards then discard a card chapter two the same thing and then chapter three shuffle any number of target cards from your graveyard into your library add blue blue that's pretty interesting um it's obviously pretty soft um and it's a little expensive if this was two mana or three mana I think it would be a lot better. Um, and that's it for blue. 
I I honestly think that that stern scolding is my favorite blue card. I really like um, press the enemy as well. Uh, that one's really cool. Elrond is okay. The Gandalf friend of the Shire is really really nice. I think this one's gonna play a lot. Um, you know, unlocking all of your sorcery spells at flash speed uh, is really really cool. I think this one is probably my vote for the best blue card. But I can't help but love Stern Scolding. I think this this counters so many creatures in Magic: The Gathering. Um, and there's no if or but to it. It's just counter it. I think that that is exceptional. In in draft, this is going to be an absolute blue powerhouse. Um, in commander, maybe not so much. I know that a lot of play groups tend to stay away from counter magic in general, so even more so, not so much. But if you're playing this. If you're playing blue in a format that um, Lord of the Rings is legal in, you should highly consider playing Stern Scolding. This is a very good counter card. Um, and you pair this again with Spell Pierce and you've got a dynamic duo that is frustratingly unstoppable. But at the end of the day, I mean, Horse Guy might be a sleeper I think someone's gonna come up with something really weird with this guy it's very interesting to see um, if is it creativity was in modern I would say that Bill Fernie is going to revolutionize creativity decks um, but creativity is only really in pioneer and these aren't legal in pioneer so that kind of sucks um, but yeah, my vote is Gandalf, a friend of the Shire, for the best, most interesting card in this color. Um, that's it. That's that's all for blue. We're going to have to move on now. And I know that that's hard to hear sometimes. But as Ted Lasso would say, be a goldfish. Forget about it. Move on. Grow from it. Learn from it. Uh, we're going to take a quick bio break, and then we'll jump into the next color, which is black. Um, yeah, thank you so much for being here. If you're watching this on YouTube, uh, like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you're most excited about um, from this set. And definitely 